What's up guys, thanks for tuning in on today's video. I'm Gabe and I'm here with my friend Orin. Yep. Today we're gonna be basically changing out the brake clutch fluid on my 2010 Camaro SS. Uh, reason why I'm doing it specifically today is because at higher RPMs, I'm experiencing a lot of inconsistency with my uh, clutch interaction and engagement. You know, I'll shift into gear uh, and then afterwards when I press the clutch into, you know, change gears, the clutch won't actually come back up until like seconds later. So you can imagine when, you know, you're using it in high performance situations, racing, tracking, whatever, it's going to affect the overall experience and the performance of the cars. We're also going to be installing a separate clutch fluid reservoir. Look, uh, there's a lot of arguments to say that it's not useful. Other people say it is. I'm gonna do it anyway, just because, you know, why not? We're messing with the fluids today anyway. I figured I'd go ahead and see if it makes a difference. Uh, and hopefully this entire ordeal makes a difference today and I get a better clutch response and obviously uh, braking capacity as well. Uh, the fluids haven't been changed in quite some time, so we gotta do this anyway. And by the way, since we're doing so many things in parts today, you guys can check the video guide. So there's gonna be certain sections that I'll title, that way you guys can skip through certain sections. Uh, so for example, if you don't really wanna install this, but you just wanna know how to do the brake uh, bleeding and fluid exchange, you guys can go ahead and skip to that part and vice versa. If you wanna know how to do this, go ahead and check that certain section. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and begin. Before we begin, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that we'll be needing and what we're gonna be using for today. Rags, because you're gonna be involved with brake fluid around this area, around the brakes as well. So you're gonna wanna have something to clean off very quickly. It's very corrosive. It will pretty much eradicate the paint. Obviously the kit here, we're using dot four brake fluid. You could use dot three, dot four, and they're interchangeable in this situation. Uh, we're gonna use a tire iron or whatever wrench uh, just to take out the wheels because it's going to be a lot easier to do that. We also are going to use a turkey baster and this is not going to be like the primary tool that we're going to be using to suck out the liquid. We actually are going to be using a mitra. No, midi vac. Midi vac. There you go. Yeah. Extremely useful tool. But this is just going to be just to remove some fluids before we actually start uh, taking it out with the vacuum because there's just not a big storage compartment there. So the less fluid that has to deal with the better. Obviously, since you're going to be working with taking off the tires and the wheels, you're going to be using a jack stands. We're going to use 716 for the Zerk fittings. If you have a SS performance, um, it will use uh, a 716 Zerk. I think on the other models, you use a smaller one. So this is the number two Phillips with the right angle on it. Now you don't need this. You can use a smaller screwdriver. We're using the tools we have on hand. Just what we're going to use first thing we're going to do is start using the turkey baster here and we're going to be sucking out as much uh brake fluid from here we're going to get a feel for you know how the condition of the fluid actually is and uh, we're going to be dumping it into here and then again this is going to get messy so you got to use uh towels that you don't love it's not that bad though actually better than i thought it'd be yeah All right, so I'm seeing here that the baster can't really squeeze any more out. We'll go ahead and start using the pump here. Let me just uh, clean up the area a little bit here. Uh, when you buy one of these, keep in mind there's one side that says two pump, this is the pump. Do not install it backwards. There's actually a one-way valve inside this cap. If you do it the wrong way, you won't be very happy about the results. <laughs> What I like about this is it doesn't really leak. Yeah, we're not gonna get anything with that. Now see, this is from the bottom. Look at that color. Yummy. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, when you start sucking from the bottom is where you really see. Start to see the, the difference, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and start uh, mounting the separate clutch reservoir. And that's actually gonna go right next to the master here. The screw is right here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Yeah, we're gonna get her here around that air conditioning lines and we're gonna reach it here. You're gonna attach, or you're gonna slide really the metal piece, not inside here, this little area. You're gonna install it on the outside. And then of course, it's a little loose now, but once we tighten it, it's going to hold itself into place. Yeah, and you want to start it by hand. Once you get it started by hand, we can yep. 
finish off with the power so I'll, I'll hold it in place there we go very nice so we're going to loosen the clamp you can use a pair of vice you know crescent wrench or whatever you want to call this this is just a center pair of pliers and that is currently coming from the clutch into the master so we're going to go ahead and take that out and it's going to leak there we go once you slid that back what i usually try first is to grab with the pliers and see if i can just turn it just break it loose once it moves i should be able to pull it right off there you go you're starting to move it a little bit i'm starting to see it nothing <laughs> <laughs> so there there's some go. in here um all right you're gonna actually have to remove and i'm gonna have to shine a light to show you guys right there is where the clutch line is you know you can follow it right here so you need a needle nose pliers probably ideally to get right. the clamp uh, it's the same kind of style clamp as we have over here um and normally they're pretty easy to take off still at the area makes it suck so once you try to grab it try to flip it on the front so you can see it now you can use the pliers Don't do it twice like I'm about to do. This is the old hose. You can see there's some fluid slowly dripping out. You're gonna to wanna to block off the reservoir. Right. Now earlier we were gonna use zip ties because we're, you know, Neanderthals. But we actually realized we still have the clamps from the old one. And that would go right here. Right over there. Too big. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. We're still gonna use zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> zip ties or perhaps a smaller clamp that you could buy at Home Depot, but Basically, we need to cover off where the old clutch line was going to. Definitely not the most presentable one, but uh, listen, it works. Now slide in and install the new uh, hose. We've got the hose on the master, master cylinder, and now we're going to go ahead and attach it to the actual reservoir. And now I'm going to do the thing I did the last time. So usually I grab a bit, a bit, of, a bit of the old fluid and just wet, just wet the hose and then wet the barb. Just makes it a little easier for it to go on. And see when you wet it, just wiggles on in. Yep. So now we're gonna fill. Look at the difference guys. Yeah, like water. Look at that. I might as well drink this, I'm thirsty. If you don't plan on changing the fluids and you simply just want to install the separate clutch reservoir, what you can do is simply pour some .3 or .4 fluid into the tube facing upwards, you know, that way gravity does its work. And you can simultaneously pour a little bit of fluid into it, that way it purges out all of the air. And of course, once you get it to the top of it, plug it in, uh, and again, that prevents air from getting into the system once you detach it from the master reservoir here and actually detach it from the actual master cylinder over there uh, you'll actually introduce some air in the system if you again want to change out the fluids then stick around all right so this is the part where it's a little different from what you would do normally like i said on a lot of vehicles you crack open the the bleeder valve on the slave cylinder next to the transmission um like i said on this vehicle it's a little more difficult to get to we're gonna try this. So we're gonna use the right angle adapter on the mini, that comes on the minivac. We're gonna stick that into the um, reservoir and we're gonna pull a vacuum. We're gonna see how many bubbles we get out of it. Ideally, we get all of it out. Um, as you um, suck the air out of this, you're gonna to wanna to add fluid back. So once that level starts going down, we're gonna be adding, adding fluid. fluid yeah. So we're gonna fit that in there. And normally you'd have somebody actuate the pedal. Yeah, if you pump on it, you'll see bubbles coming up. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna see little bubbles coming out. Keep pumping it. Yeah, bubbles are gonna keep coming up. Okay. So now that we have that, let's stop for a bit. We're gonna pull the old fluid out and we're gonna add new fluid again. It's getting dirty, it's mixing in. All right, we're just gonna fill it back up again. Yeah, but we're just not pumping as quickly now. So at the beginning, you're just really, like I was going out and just pump it, pump right. it, pump it to get everything out. Now we're slowing down. You go ahead and pump it once. Let go. Okay. Yeah, just wait now. 
Wait, give it a second. We gotta let, so, so you see my, if you can see here, yeah. see his bubbles, gotta wait till the, all the bubbles come up. But otherwise we're gonna suck the air right back in. We don't wanna suck the air back in. If you look at the brake line here, we actually have the fluid. If you put, if you pull the, the pedal down too far too quickly, you'll actually suck in air. All right, go ahead. Look at all those bubbles coming up. Yeah, when you stomped on it, you put a whole bunch back in. Yeah, that's why it's taking a little bit longer now. That's why we're getting big bowls again. They're smaller again now, so it's getting better. Yeah, so don't stomp on the pedal when you're doing it this way. We just sucked a bunch of air back in, which is why this is taking, part of why this is taking so long. Learn from somebody else's mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not professional car mechanics. We're, we're just guys who like our cars. Exactly. Hold it down. Okay, just hold it there. All right, let it back up. What you don't want to let me do is let the fluid go all the way down. Meaning it has to stop at least about there. Okay. Otherwise, we're just putting it here back. All right, bring stop. it. Yeah, stop. Now let come back up. Yeah, look at that. Jeez. You know? Oh, it's. We're all the way down? It's almost. It's like at the black part. So just. There's not. You see, there's less bubbles now. We're going to give it a second. We're going to reduce the vacuum. All right, let's go ahead and fill it up. All right, so you have the pedal one pump, but just go slowly. I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah, don't go down. Like, you can let go, but you can't push down any further. All right, down, but slow down. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Stop, go back up. We're almost completely done with this, so. All right, you go down. Down, down, stop. Go back up. Keep going. 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 Stop. Okay, go back up. So if it was a terrible leak, we would have seen even more bubbles or the yeah, same yeah, amount. yeah. I think I think we got it this time though. All right. So the way how you really know is you drive it. Yeah. No. I'm fairly I'm confident right now we're as good as we're gonna get on this without cracking the slate. Next step would now to be working on the brakes because that was kind of like the other part of this video. So uh, for those that are interested in doing the brakes, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. Yeah, so we emptied it earlier, so now we gotta refill it. And it looks, it looks like water as it goes in, not, you know, Coca Cola Tea. or coffee. We're actually gonna do this the traditional way, which is we're actually going to have somebody in the vehicle pumping the brakes, and then we're gonna crack the valves on the brakes. Uh, we do have a Zerk fitting on the front of the caliper. So there's a little nipple here we have to take off. I'll take it off later. But there's another one on the back side of the caliper. We gotta hit both of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the, the fitting loose. We're gonna pump the pedal down and then we're gonna close the fitting and then we're gonna let go of the brake. Uh, what's really important about this is absolutely do not uh, let go of the brake until the person over here tells you to. You need to make sure that the brake, uh, that the valve is actually closed before you let it back in. If you suck air back into the line, you just created yourself a Big mass, don't do that. We are loosening the lug nuts on the wheels and we're doing that because we're gonna have to take off all the wheels at some point. Technically, you don't really have to, but if you don't- it's e It makes it easier. This is just making it easier is really what it is. If you don't mind getting brake fluid all over your wheels- um, uh, No, <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, first wheel is off. These are the two fittings we're looking at. We're looking at this fitting here and this fitting here. So we're going to start from this one. So this is the valve that you're referring to. It's and called we, a Zerk fitting. Zerk fitting. Or, Zerk, or Zerk valve. All right. So we took the nipples off. Don't lose them. Yeah. So what we're doing right now. So this is the one you could do at one person. 
you can do it this way where you pull a vacuum, you want to crack the valve open. It's going to suck all that pond scum crap out. Look at that. And you want to watch your, you want to watch that. Make sure you don't pull too much. You don't end up with no vacuum. So I'm keep going. Here's what I mean by green pond scum. So this is where this is where likely somebody had already replaced the fluid within the reservoir, but they never actually cracked these valves. Right, which is typically what people do. Yeah, green pond scum. I wasn't kidding. Yeah, look at that. It looks like a. We're in Florida, guys. That's what you get. All right, so one thing when you're doing this, you need to really be careful. You need to keep walking back to your reservoir to make sure you do not run that reservoir dry. If you have a second person, what they should be doing is sitting over here at the reservoir and refilling. Refilling. Yeah, so you never want to let that go dry. All right. This is the part where it's important to... Yeah, do not let go of the brake until I tell you to. You're going to push to the bottom, and then you're going to hold, and I'll feel let go, okay? Okay. All right, so push, put some pressure on the brake. Okay, and I'm going to let go of the valve. Is the brake falling? No. I'm putting pressure. Pr on the brake, right? Yes. Push down. Okay. Push down. Okay. Keep pushing down. Okay. It's sunk in. It's all the way in. All right. It's all the way down? Yes. All right, hold it down. Do not let it up. Got it. All right, let go. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right, letting go. All right, same thing. Press it down. Okay, going in. Let me know when it stops. Ooh, yeah, it stopped. So you, it's hit the bottom? Yeah, already. Already? Yeah. All right, push it down and hold it there. Okay, it's in. Okay. Okay, now it's going in. It's depressing now, like it's going in. Word. Okay, I think we're... Okay, we need to go over this. Tell me when it stops. Okay, it stopped. Like I'm, I'm, I'm at the maximum possible like position. All right, let go of the brake. Okay. Okay. All right. Now push it down. Okay. And and it's not falling to the floor, right? It's, it's not, not all... like if the car's off. Yes. Okay. All right. So all right, I'm gonna let the brake valve open. So keep pressure on the on the pedal. Tell me when it hits the floor. Okay. Okay, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. It's... Okay, hit the floor. All right, press the pedal down. It's already in there. Okay. Like, I, hadn't, I haven't lifted it yet. But yet. Oh, lift it? Okay. All right, press the pedal down. Okay. Okay, it's depressing now, okay. Now it's at all the way at the end. All right, let go. Okay. Press it down. Okay. All right. It's all the way down. All right. I'm still holding it. Okay, let go. Yep. Okay. All right, do one more. So press down and let me know it hits the floor. Okay, this, it's stuck halfway. Okay, press down, and it's stopped, right? Yeah, it stopped. Okay. There you go. Okay, now it's depressed all the way. So this is the nasty crap we're pulling out. And now we're gonna have to empty this out, and then we're gonna do the other side. Look at that. That is just freaking filthy. So we're pulling here to 25. I just want to keep that in my my sight. I don't want to really see it go below 15. Push down. Okay. Okay. That's to the floor. That's to the floor. All right, up. Okay. Down. Okay. All right, it's all the way down. All the way down? Yep. All right, let it up. We're not just bleeding, we're also changing out the fluid. True. If we're just bleeding, we don't have to do this once. 
per valve. Like we're not just trying to get the air out, we're also trying to change the bombs come out. Basically that you saw the process there, we're just gonna repeat that times four. Times four. Well, six more, because it's yeah. two per side right here. So one, two. So you see here, it's it's actually so bad that it's separating, like the water is separating from the water, crap. Right, crap. yeah. There's like an ecosystem in here, dude. You're right. So as you guys can see, we've done pretty much the back calipers now, and you'll notice that there is a, a lot less fluid. That's pretty much all the fluid that was currently in there that we took out, all the nasty, you know, bikini bottom stuff. And again, we're gonna add a little bit more as we continue the front tires, uh, wheels. Okay guys, so we just finished on putting on the last tire. Obviously we finished doing all four brake calipers. So there's two on each. So we did eight different bleeds from different, uh, what was it, Blade valves? Points. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you guys clearly saw how disgusting the fluid was. So I expect an immediate difference uh, over time. Uh, so yeah, let's put everything back and start taking this thing on the road. Smooth. And then I would do a brake test before you go any high, before you go any, before you go any faster, do a brake test. Yeah, step one, really step one. Mm. How do they feel? Delayed. Delayed? Okay, keep going. Prime again. Delay? A, or? a little bit, a little bit, but it was better than before. Delay or? I like, I'm stepping on it, but the car is you not braking. Harder? No, you need more pressure. You need to press harder. What's your, what's your misunderstanding? The brake is not sinking to the floor. It just won't go any further. Right. You're not pressing hard enough. Okay, so I gotta really press harder. So, so you were used to having spongy brakes with air in them. Now you have brakes with no air in them. When I meant press the brakes, I meant really press the brakes. Got it. Oh, your synchros feel good. I wanna do a third this second. Let's see. Feels good. Yeah? Okay guys, so we just took the car out for a run. The brakes are working fine. The clutch is still having that weird like returning spring situation. But my, my fear at first when you explained it was that the clutch wasn't disengaging. So I thought that when you press the clutch in, you would try to go to second and it would grind. Yeah. That's an issue which you'll see when the fluid's worn out or you have a worn out master cylinder. Um, in this case, sometimes the clutch doesn't just fully return. That's a mix of being kind of worn out springs and the design of this pedal box. Um, I kind of wanted to see if you can adjust the throw on this, but uh, maybe some guys who work on these more can tell you how to do it. I've looked underneath it. Now, you can kind of mess with the rod length, but I'm not really familiar with this one. Um, most cars, you can adjust out some of that and have a lower pedal position. But look, we managed to do something that had to be done anyway. I'll keep you guys posted on what I decide to do or how to address the returning situation for the clutch you know as you mentioned it's not like it's inhibiting the car from shifting as a whole it's just kind of like screwing with the 
anticipation the and the yeah. feel of it. Guys, if you found this video informative and somewhat entertaining, go ahead and give it a like. Really appreciate it. It helps out with the algorithm. If you guys enjoy my content overall, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos, my vlogs, my how-tos, my reviews. And uh, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.